oh, hey, there's free Wi-Fi at the grocery store. Why don't I just use that? Because it's really insecure. Oh, hey, there's free Wi-Fi at the library. I can just use that. No, that is really insecure. Hey, why don't I just use the data plan on my cell phone? Because that's really, really insecure. Oh, hey, there's some guy on a train sharing his Wi-Fi as a mobile hotspot. I'll just jump on that. Really? All of these ways of accessing the internet are really, really insecure. You're on someone else's network and you've no idea what data they're capturing or what they're going to do with it. The most secure place for you to be in terms of accessing the internet is on your home network. And what we can do here is set up our own VPN server so we can access our home network from anywhere in the world. And all you need to do it is a Raspberry Pi. <music> Hello once again, Pi geeks and techno nerds all around the world. My name's Jeff. I'm an IT professional who's been in the industry for over 30 years. In my spare time, I like nothing more than playing around with Raspberry Pis. Sure you do too. If you like what you see here, please hit that like button, subscribe to see more, and hit that notification bell so you can be told when I put a new video out. This time, I'm going to show you how you can set up your own VPN server. Now, as you're probably aware, there are many, many vendors out there who offer VPN services, and they're all really great, but they do also have a certain amount of downsides. Firstly, they all cost money. And secondly, you don't really know what they're doing with your data. Ultimately, you're still connecting to someone else's infrastructure and you have no control over that. The only network infrastructure you really have control over is your own. And by setting up your own VPN, you can have direct access to that no matter where you are in the world. The only equipment that you're going to need for this particular project is the Raspberry Pi itself. Everything else is just software. So this one's really easy. I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi 3B for this. Technically speaking, you could probably use any kind of Raspberry Pi as long as it's not a Pico. But you may end up with bandwidth problems if you use something like a Pi Zero. So I'd recommend using at least a Pi 3. Now, in order to understand why a VPN is so useful, you really need to know a little bit about how public key infrastructure works. If you really don't care about this and you just want to get on with building it, I've put chapter links in so you can jump straight to that. But right now, let's go and take a look and see how it works. Ultimately, all we're trying to achieve here is to send data securely between two people. In this case, I've got Jack and Betty. They want to send data to each other and they want to do it securely. In order to secure that connection, all of the data needs to be encrypted. And this is where certificates come into play. Now, a certificate is really just a piece of data that consists of a public key, a private key, and information about who issued the certificate in the first place. The public key is used for encryption. The private key is used for decryption. And the public key can also be used to validate who generated the certificate in the first place and make sure it hasn't been modified along the way. In order to start this process, Betty sends Jack her public key, and this also includes information about the certificate authority or the certificate maker who generated that certificate. Jack can then use the public key to validate that that certificate authority did in fact create this certificate and that no data has been modified along the way. Jack then sends his public key to Betty and she does exactly the same. Once they've established this mutual trust between them, they can start sending data to each other. So first off, Let's say Jack wants to send some data to Betty. First thing he does is he encrypts it using Betty's public key. That results in an encrypted piece of data that he can then send on to Betty. Now, Betty then uses her private key to decrypt the data. Now, she's not had to share this private key with anybody. And this is what makes this certificate system so secure. The only thing you have to send around at all is the public key. And with the public key, you can encrypt data, but you can't decrypt it. So this means no matter what other data Jack may get hold of that is targeted for Betty, he can't decrypt it because he doesn't have the private key. Only she does. And once she's decrypted the data, she can read that with absolutely no problem. If she wants to send data back to Jack, then she just does exactly the same in reverse. She takes her data. She encrypts it using Jack's public key. That gives her the encrypted data. She sends it over to Jack, who then decrypts it with his private key. And then he ends up with the data himself. 
Now, a VPN is effectively like a virtual network interface. And so this means no matter what data Jack and Betty are sending to each other, no matter which application, could be browser information, email, chat, anything, all of it gets encrypted. And only Jack and Betty themselves can actually decrypt the data that is targeted at them. Now we know all about public key infrastructure, or at least the beginnings of it. It's actually a really deep topic, but we know enough that we can get on with the installation. The first thing to do there is to install Raspberry Pi OS onto our Raspberry Pi. If you're not sure how to do that, take a look at my video on the subject just here. In my case, I'm using the 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS Lite, and that runs just fine on my Raspberry Pi 3. Now the OS is installed, the first thing we need to do is just make sure it's all up to date. And now everything's up to date, we can go ahead and install the OpenVPN software. Now we've got OpenVPN installed, we need to worry about all of these certificates. The first thing we need to do is make ourselves a certificate authority. Now this may sound really challenging, but it's actually really simple. All the major software you need for this is included within OpenVPN, and they make the process really simple. Initially, we just need to copy over the tool that OpenVPN provides into our home directory. Now we have that, we can just move into this directory and start creating our certificate authority. The first thing to do here is to provide some data about ourselves. And this is done within a file called vars. If we take a look in here, you can see that there's a file called vars.example. So let's just make a copy of that and name it vars. And now we can edit that. I'm going to use vi, but please use the editor of your choice. If you scroll down to this section here, you can see that there's a whole bunch of data that we need to provide. So I'm going to uncomment each line of this and then set the values to be relevant to me. And that's it. Once you're done with that, just save it out. The next step is to initialize the certification system. And that's done with this command. I told you it was easy. The next step is to set up the certificate authority itself, and that is equally simple. Now the CA certificate will want a password here, so type in any passphrase of your choice. In this next section, you just need to name your certification authority. And that's it. Congratulations, you're now a certification authority. The next step is to generate the certificates that the OpenVPN server software can use. I've specified a no pass option here. This is just because I don't want the OpenVPN server software having to prompt for a password every time it starts up. But during generation here, I still need to provide the password for the certification authority. And there you go, our server certificate is now created. I now need to create a certificate for the client. For this one, I do want to create a password for this certificate. So every time I try to connect to my VPN, I'll need to provide this password. And again, I need to provide the password for the certification authority. As well as the server and client certificates, there are two other certificates that need to be created in order for OpenVPN to work. The first of these is to generate what are called Diffie-Hellman parameters. Now these are just kind of encryption parameters that are needed by the server. Just like with all the others, it's really easy to create them. You just use this command here. The last thing we need to generate is what's called a TLS authentication certificate. This just provides an extra layer of security on top of the normal SSL connection. It's just generated with this command here. And there you go. 
all of your certificates are now created. And we can get on with creating the configuration for the OpenVPN software itself. The first thing we're going to put together is a server configuration file. OpenVPN provides a template for this, and we can grab a copy of it with this command here. This needs a little bit of modification, so let's go in and edit it. The only changes you need to make in here are to provide absolute paths to each of the certificates. I'm going to install each of these under slash etc slash openvpn slash server. So I just need to provide that path for each of the file names. If you want clients to be able to access devices on your local network, there's one other piece of config that you need to put in here. It's up here in this section labeled push routes to the client. Let's uncomment one of these. And I'm going to set this to the network ID of my home network. After this, I can just save out the config file. Now we have everything that we need to run up the server. So let's just copy all of the various files into the right place. For the Diffie Hellman certificate here, the server config file actually referenced it by a slightly different name. So I'm just going to rename it to match that. Now here I'm having to copy both the public key, which is the CRT file, and the private key, which is the .key file, both into the server directory. This is so that the server can send the public key off to the client and can decrypt data sent back to it. Once you connect to your VPN, if you want to actually be able to connect to devices on your home network, there are two other commands that you'll need to run at the system level. The first of these is to enable IP forwarding on your Raspberry Pi. That's done with this command here. The second is to update the internal firewall on your Raspberry Pi to allow the traffic to flow forwards and backwards across your home network. And that's done with this command here. Now that's all done, we can try starting up OpenVPN and make sure it starts successfully. And there we go, everything ran up successfully. The next step is to set up the client configuration file. Just like with a server configuration file, OpenVPN provides a templated version of a client configuration file that you can use and then just update for your needs. So let's copy that over first. Now the first things we're going to need to do are actually copy the values of our various certificates into the config file. I'm going to connect to the VPN from my phone and OpenVPN on there needs all of the various certificates to be all embedded within the configuration as opposed to separate files. But that's actually really easy to do. Let's start with the certification authority public key. Here you can see that the certificate itself is just plain text. So we can just take a copy of that into the clipboard. And now I can edit the client config and paste that in. You just create what looks like a CA, almost HTML tag, then paste the value in. And then close that tag. We then need to do the same with the client public key. This time, the tag that you use is just called cert. The last one is the client private key. And the tag to use for this one is key. We also need the TLS authentication key, so we can paste that in as well. And that's put in with a tag TLS auth. Now there are some small other changes we need to make to the config file. Specifically, we need to take out the file references that were there before. These are down here and we can just comment them out. There's also the TLS one. 
and that's just here so we can comment that out as well however for this one there is another bit of information we need that one at the end is significant but we can provide that data with a different key name if we just put in key direction one then that will provide the same information the last important piece of configuration you need to make on the client side is the actual name or IP address of the OpenVPN server. If you just search for the word remote, you can find that configuration. And then you just need to put that in here. I'm just going to put in the IP address on the local LAN. After this, our client configuration file is almost ready to go. However, again, the OpenVPN client on my phone requires that the configuration file is named with a particular file extension. So let's just rename it here. So long as it has that OVPN extension, everything's good. Now the client configuration is ready. I just need to copy it over to my phone. I'm going to do that off camera. On the left here, you can see the server side. On the right, you can see the screen from my phone. So the first thing I'm going to do is start up the server. Now that's running. On my client, I need to import the OpenVPN client settings. To do that, I just start up the app. Go to the menu, import profile, upload file, and then I can browse for my config file. Now I have that selected, I can just hit OK to import it. It gives me an option here to save the private key password. I'm going to check that so that it doesn't ask me for the password every single time I connect. Now I just hit the connect button. Now it's connected and you can see that that connection attempt was registered by the server. Now, in itself, this isn't proving very much, since my phone was already on the local network. In order to get it to work from the outside, I need to punch a hole in my firewall to allow incoming connections to be routed to the Raspberry Pi. So I'm just going to go off to my firewall and do that now. On my firewall, the port forwarding is configured within this NAT forwarding section of the advanced settings. However, all routers are different, so your one is probably going to be different to this. But just look for something called port forwarding or virtual servers, and you'll end up in the right place. The idea is that you just need to be able to configure an external port that it will listen to, what internal port that maps to, and the IP address of your Raspberry Pi that it's going to send those requests to. Once all that's in place, just like the top line that you can see in the table here, everything's fine. Now the firewall change has been made. Just need to make one more change to our client configuration file, and that's to change the IP address that it actually connects to. I originally had that set up as being a local LAN IP address straight to the Raspberry Pi. But since I won't have access to the local LAN, this needs to be something that I can connect to over the public internet. In order to do this, I've used a service called noip.com. That's a dynamic DNS provider. And I've configured a host name in there that points to my router's WAN IP address. I can then use that host name in my client configuration file to connect to my server. So what I need to do here first is just stop my server and edit my client configuration file. Go back to the remote setting and change this IP address to the host name that I've configured. Then I can save that. And I can start up the server again. I now need to transfer that client configuration file off to my phone again. I'll do that off camera. Now, before I'm going to connect onto this, I'm actually going to switch my phone away from Wi Fi and onto mobile data. That way, there is no way that the VPN can connect over the local LAN. Now I hit connect, and you can see that my VPN is connected. And I should now be able to connect to all of my local devices. Let's try one. And yes, I've been able to connect with absolutely no problem. Let's now just try browsing the internet. And again, this is no problem at all. So no matter what I'm doing on my phone now and wherever I am in the world, as long as I'm connected to this VPN, everything is nice and secure. Plus, I can access any of my resources at home. And that includes things like my Jellyfin media server. So I can access my movie collection and play anything I like from there. And everything is absolutely secure and encrypted. So there you go. Now you can browse safely on the internet no matter where you are. Once again, if you liked what you see here, please hit that like button, subscribe to see more, and hit that notification bell so you can be made aware when I put another video out. What Pi projects are you working on right now? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you've got any ideas for other projects that you'd like to see me do, let me know there as well. Thanks so much for watching till the end. Bye for now.